Hello YouTube, welcome to my garage. My name is Sean Capsum, and today I'm going to be showing you an episode of a new type of oil that was released. Um, it was made by Pennzoil, and it is called the Platinum Full Synthetic. And what makes this engine oil special is it is made from natural gas. It says right on the container there and if you get on YouTube they have a lot of videos claiming that their engine oil is really really nice stuff. So I go through oil quite a bit. Um, I change my engine oil once a month in my vehicles. Um, I drive 10,000 miles plus per month and so engine protection is uh, very serious and very real to me and it's important that I use an engine oil that will last my full 10,000 miles per month. Um, otherwise, changing my engine oil twice a month is just not acceptable. So, as you all know, in my vehicles, I do something that most other people do not do, and they run natural gas. That is my primary, primary source of fuel. Um, I calculated the amount of fuel usage that I consumed in the past 10,000 miles on the vehicle. And it is 769 gallons of fuel was used to propel my fleet vehicle that 10,000 miles. Um, in that time, uh, two tanks were used of gasoline. The rest was natural gas. So the ratio, we're about, we're a little over 96% of natural gas being used for that vehicle. Uh, you'll see there are some Penzo commercials on YouTube claiming that this stuff is the best and nobody else in the world I can guarantee you has made a commercial or a video or done a real test on Penzo Oil Platinum. Now I've been using, um, I've driven a million miles combined on all my vehicles. I've owned uh, over 40 vehicles. I've stopped counting after 40 uh, since 1997. So I've gone through quite a few vehicles. Um, in that time I have never blown an engine or uh, had an engine that needed to be rebuilt. Um, so in that time I have rebuilt quite a few engines. They have all been Fords. I've never rebuilt a Chevrolet engine. and. Every time I've owned a Chevrolet, um, everybody knows the Chevrolet LS engines suffer from a sludge problem. And I rebuild engines, and mostly Ford engines. And if you get online and, um, you know, let me see if I get like turn back on. If you get online, you can see uh, a lot of YouTube videos about uh, people tearing down their taking off their oil pan or the rail covers on their Chevrolet LS engine and seeing a lot of sludge. Um, Chevrolet builds an excellent engine, but um, it is a, what you call a low tolerance engine, so it is susceptible to uh, any kind of particulates or sludge problems. Uh, those oil passages clog up, you won't have oil going to certain parts of your engine, and you'll cause immediate engine wear. Um, I created a formulation that I've used since 2000 and uh, it's obviously worked. Uh, when I change my oil I, I go longer than anybody else. Uh, what I'm going to show you today is something a little bit special. Um, I've come up with a modified my formulation. Um, my dad mentioned this that it was uh, made from natural gas and brought it up to me and um, you know, I, I drive the miles and I put the abuse on the vehicles to be able to honestly test it. Um, so, since my vehicle runs on natural gas, I thought it would be pretty cool to run an oil that was made for natural gas and see exactly how well it worked. Um, also, something that I use is Lucas Oil Stabilizer. Now, there's a lot of people that make a lot of videos and say, Oh, Lucas is worse shit. It, all it does is thicken up your oil. Um, those people either are not true mechanics or they do not rebuild engines after racing them. Um, I do. I've torn engines apart after a thousand miles. Uh, when you 
you see what the difference is with Lucas. I'm not a salesman for them, that company, I don't get paid for it, but I drive 10,000 miles per month, minimum. Um, I know what happens. And I will tell you, everybody else in my fleet that does not run the formulation that I run, their engines make extreme noise, they smoke. Uh, Chevrolet LS engines, if you don't use Lucas, will develop piston slap at about 150,000 miles. It is just, that's the way it is. Don't believe me? Fly your ass down here to Salt Lake and I can show you. Uh, there are 20 Chevrolet LS engines uh, between our two companies. Every single one of them make a really loud piston slap. Um, I've been using Lucas, um, I believe, since the first year they came out. As soon as I saw it, um, it has been a long time. I don't even remember uh, exactly when I started using it, but it, it was the early 2000s. And I have never stopped. I've never missed an oil change without Lucas. Another thing that I use, if people follow me, is Marvel Mystery Oil. And there are a lot of uh, YouTube videos and people on forums and stuff saying what Marvel Mystery Oil does. Uh, people say, oh, the Lucas engine oil, that thickens the oil up so thick it doesn't flow. It's going to be idiots. Uh, Marvel Mystery Oil, you put that in, it makes the engine oil so thin. Then it thins the oil out and it flows out of the oil seals. That's absolutely retarded. When you rebuild an engine and you pull it apart after using this stuff and you see what it looks like inside, it's absolutely amazing. You'll never ever do an engine oil change without Marvel Mystery Oil. Uh, what is Marvel Mystery Oil? It's basically a mineral oil. And to keep engine oil clean, uh, engine oil manufacturers most of their engineering goes towards the detergents that is inside of their oil. Um, engine oil nowadays is mostly uh, formulated with a proprietary blend of very secret detergents. And the thing that they work the most on is trying to see how long those detergents can last. As soon as the detergents break down in your oil, that's when the uh, oil starts to break down. And if you wait too long, it turns to hard carbon, and you can get hard carbon deposits. Um, if you, if you want to experience what a hard carbon problem is, go to a junkyard and open up any Ford engine, um, especially their 5.0, their uh, 5.8 liter. Damn, why? If you open up that engine and you pull the intake manifold off, you will find carbon rocks. Carbon rocks the size of baseballs inside of it. So that uh, carbon rocks can be built up by poor temperature control, uh, improper um, uh, oil change habits, which on that engine you just can't go past 3,000 miles. Um, that's what uh, makes the GM oil life monitor interesting. Um, so when you see that problem, there's only one of two ways you can either get rid of that carbon. Uh, you can either put a solvent in there to break that carbon up, and then uh, hold, it, it actually doesn't get rid of all of it. You can pull the intake back off, and it, it dissolves it, but um, you get a lot of carbon through your motor, running through it. Uh, the other way is to prevent that. And the only thing that can prevent carbon is using something non-detergent that will last the oil change interval. And that is mineral oil. Mineral oil is not a detergent, but it is the most effective lubricant that can remove carbon or break down carbon. So I run this in my fuel system, and I also run uh, Lucas at the same time. Every time I've been getting my oil changed, uh, I don't do it here in my driveway in the winter time, it's too cold. But every time I get my oil changed, uh, people look at me like I'm a retard, and guess what, I don't care. And <clears throat> after a million miles of not blowing up an engine, um, I'm pretty sure I'm okay. So when you rebuild engines, and you see how these two components themselves work, uh, you'll never try to change it. Now there is also another brand new uh, item that has been released on our market this year. Uh, it is made by Napa. 
It's called a Napa Platinum Oil Filter. Do some research on it. There's only two oil filters in the entire world right now that are a uh, high quality oil filter. Uh, AMS, uh, not AMS oil, um, Royal Purple and Napa Platinum. Those are the only two oil filters I will run in any vehicle. Um, the material, the flow rating, the capability of this, the way that this filter is built, is built better than anybody else's oil filter. Nobody can, can match these. Now, to, just so that you don't think that this is some kind of biased thing where, hey, I'm just another guy on YouTube that's posting a video about me changing oil and, hey, my engine oil looks great. Um, I'm going to do some in this video as well. Uh, luckily, you don't have to wait the time that I have to wait for the results. But I'm going to do something scientifically to know if I'm just uh, blowing smoke up people's ass over the past... Uh, 15 years, or uh, if my combination of the products that I've been using for the past uh, uh, 900,000 miles is actually correct. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't start out using this stuff. Um, so that's where the 100,000 miles discrepancy comes from. I haven't been using it the first since the first time I started driving. So for the past 900,000 miles, though, I have been using this combination. Um, with the exception of this uh, oil here and this new filter we just got released. Uh, what I'm going to talk about is this is a kit that you can order. It's from Blackstone Laboratories. Uh, this is an amazing company. I don't represent them. They don't pay me. They don't endorse me. Go to blackstone.com. I think it was blackstone.com, blackstonelaboratories.com. They'll send you this out, kit out for free. And it arrives in a package like this. This video is still recording. I don't feel like maybe if I'm talking forever. So this is a test sample kit. This is the shipping container, the outside. Inside here is going to be a form that you're going to fill out for their laboratory technicians to uh, look at. And I'm still recording. That light won't turn on. Alright, sorry for that annoyingness, but you know what? It's freaking loud as hell outside and windy, and you're not going to hear anything. But in this, they give you a form that you need to fill out with your mileage. Um, and everything like that so that they can analyze um, your your oil and get a little bit better of a reading. They actually have a they actually record this in your vehicle and your analysis and every time you send it in they're gonna compare it and send you a report card back. Uh, what they do is they uh, get this, this, these are their services they offer and so basically what I'm gonna do is as the oil is draining halfway, you need to make sure it's warmed up. Uh, that way it does flow correctly and then all of the oil is well mixed. It hasn't been sitting. Uh, I did just drive it. It's nice and hot. Uh, you're going to take this container and dip it under there midstream. Seal it back up. Set it in. That's what I'm going to do. Now, I'm going to pay for some extra tests and they will tell me if my formulation is actually working, uh, how they work together. They're going to tell me um, how long my oil is actually, how much life it still has left. Um, and they will, they, one of their tests that they do, they see what your fuel, the amount of fuel is inside of your oil. Um, that test is going to come back pretty interesting to them because um, I don't run gasoline, so I don't have a lot of gasoline going through my rings. So that test is going to be a little interesting. Um, so last final thoughts before I drain my oil and show you guys what I'm doing out there. Um, on this truck I have 160,000 miles on it. I changed the oil exactly 10,030 miles ago. And since that time I've been monitoring my oil life monitor. And interestingly it 
is pretty close to 10,000 miles. Uh, it still shows that I have 1% left at 10,030 miles, uh, but I thought that the GM Oil Life monitor was supposed to be a little bit more scientific than just based off the mileage. Um, obviously, I'm over uh, the 100% value, but you know, oh well. Um, but it's, it looks like it's timed to 10,000 miles. I'm going to start. I actually never checked that. I've, I just, I'm doing that for this video, but um, I normally change it once a month anyway, which is about 10,000, a little over 10,000 miles. Uh, in that time, I've been taking it this winter. It's been really cold. I've been real lazy. And uh, look, my oil lasts and does really well normally. I've been taking it to Jiffy Lube. Q lube, whatever the hell it's called now. But I always do have them put in the Lucas and I always have them put in the Marble. But I've been having them put in their normal Pennzoil oil, which is their uh, uh, recommended oil, that's what they carry. Just the conventional, non-synthetic. And I've been having them put in their own factory filter, which is, uh, I think it was a Maxi or Max something, Mighty Max, Mighty, something like that oil filter. Um, and actually my oil, started to get so bad, um, I could not go over 6,000 miles without my oil being completely black. Uh, something else that really, really concerned me was I was using, in that six, 7,000 mile range, I was consuming three quarts of oil. Uh, my engine does not smoke, it doesn't smoke when I start it, and I was starting to get a little bit worried, because um, I know for a fact that this LS engine absolutely will exceed 300,000 miles without blowing smoke. So I was starting to get a little concerned. So, you know, obviously it was time for me to do some scientific tests. I'm going to figure out what my um, metal content is, the brass, the steel, aluminum, um, see what the chemical composition is, and um, see what the hell's going on with my engine. Uh, now, amazingly, uh, since using this the new filter in the new oil, um, I only used one quart of oil, and I'm going to show it to you. I've only used one quart of oil, seriously, this is a controlled test. I've only used one quart of oil in the past 10,030 miles. That's a pretty big change. Temperature is hotter. Um, I let my van idle. I sleep in my van. I start at 7 o'clock, and I take a three-hour nap from midnight to 3 o'clock every single night. My vehicle does not turn off. Why? It's 20 degrees outside where I work. It is 7,000 feet up in the air. The wind blows at uh, no less than 20 miles an hour, but anywhere from 20 to 65 miles per hour at night. It is flipping cold in Wyoming where I work. So turning off my van would be miserable. I don't want to be like that. So I'm sorry for the light. I can't do this video outside. It's just too damn loud out there. Um, so in that time, I have a lot of hours on my engine. So not only do I beat the air living shit out of my engine, load my van up with freight, and this isn't a normal van, this is a big box truck. Um, going up, um, I have four mountain passes each way, so that's a total of eight mountain passes loaded. I am uh, anywhere from 10 to 12,000 pounds on the van alone. If I tow a trailer, I can be up to 16,000 pounds. That's a lot of weight. And also, I don't just uh, pass a vehicle or drive up the mountains at 35 miles an hour. Um, I go with the flow of traffic. My Chevy truck can do it. Um, you know, if a semi truck comes out, I need to know that what I've got inside my engine, I need to floor it because the semi truck needs to come out and pass another truck and cut me off for about four or five miles. I need to know that I can floor it take that engine up to 5,500 RPM without it blowing. That's what I do. I can't count how many times a night. At least 100. Um, I, can, I can drop dead floor that van 100 times a night. So this isn't like a, like a little Chevy truck that I tow a boat to the mountains once a month. Uh, this is something that I beat the shit out of every night. So my oil test is not going to be like something you see on a Penzo commercial. This is extreme. So I'm going to take you out and uh, show you my live drain. Uh, to change your oil on your GM engine, you need a drain pan, you need a 15 millimeter wrench, and a good set of hands and rags. So 
We're going to go out there and get to work. All right, so what I'm going to show you right now is I'm going to pull my dipstick and I want to show you what I think this Napa oil filter is doing to my oil. Um, oil filtration is very, very serious and I absolutely believe that uh, most of this is caused by the filter because I've used a hell of a lot of different types of synthetic oils with the same results. This is the first time I've ever um, pulled my dipstick. This is a Let's get a clean spot. See that? It's going to be clean. All right. This is. I didn't wipe this. This is first pull. It's ten thousand miles. Hope you can see that. That's that's first pull. You see how that's still clean? Watch the dipstick. Wait till you see this. See how clean that engine oil is? God, I hope you can see that. Yeah, you can see through them holes. How do you like that? Yeah, isn't that cool? Look at that. One quart down. I'm going to let it drip on there. It's just, uh, looks kind of red. Yeah, it's going to drip onto the rag. Um, you know, cameras kind of suck, but there it is. That's pretty gosh dang good. Look at that. Look how, look how golden it still is. Yeah, it's starting to change color, but, you know, that is, I put almost 400 hours on this oil change. That's 400 hours, not miles, but hours that this engine has run on this oil. Not just mileage, but hours. One quart down, oil is still gold colored. You can't beat that. I mean, that's, that's just awesome. But scientifically, I'm going to see how well I'm doing with my oil change, see if I need to minimize it or do more oil changes. See if I can get a good angle. All right. So I hope this is uh, going to help people out. So you're going to watch me make a mess of myself.
Yeah, you can't see that very well, but that oil is pretty clear. I mean, that that's pretty good. really don't give you very much room for this. Barely spin the dang thing. I don't know why they didn't move it over a little bit. Get a little bit more room to put your hand around. Okay, so what I'm showing you, this is, this is a Napa Platinum filter. Napa Platinum 47060. Hope you can see that. I'm going to let that drain for a bit. Next time you see me, I'm going to have some official results back from Blackstone. Thanks for watching. Hey, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to show you uh, my oil leaks. <clears throat> yeah, so I got a buddy that just told me, oh, I watched something on YouTube, and this guy says, oh, it thins out your oil, make everything leak, especially your front main seal. All right, here is my engine, 160,000 miles. That's my front main seal. Do you see any leaks? Uh, you see any? I don't. How about any weepage? Any weepage? No? Uh, anything? You see any leaks? Anywhere? Out of my front main sill? There anything? No? That's amazing. Yeah. All right, let's go to the back. All right, how about the rear main seal? Anything? Any leaks? How about my transmission? Any leaks? No? Let's see. You see anything? Because I don't. So does uh, Marvel Mr. Oil thin out your oil so thin that it makes your sills leak? No. Neglect does. Look at that. Yeah, Napa Platinum. 47060 for your GMLS engine. 47060. Yeah. Sorry, I wanted to show you that. 
wanted to show you what my engine looks like after 160,000 miles and or 4,700 hours on that engine. That's 4,700 hours on that engine. There's my mileage. Put the key in. I'm not gonna start it, but okay. So yeah, ten. Shut up. Ten ten thousand twenty nine miles. That's that's how many miles I went on this oil change. One percent oil life remaining. Alright, so, uh, yeah, the, uh, uh, that fuel used, now nah, that's not, dude, I hope this isn't upside down. If that's upside down, I'm going to be pissed. Alright, so we'll go back through. That fuel used, that's actually not uh, what I used. I actually used 769. I reset that a little after because I wanted to see what my fuel mileage was. Uh, I did gain a mile per gallon, but that's it. All right, so I hope you're enjoying this, and uh, any kind of retarded comments I delete. So be nice. I'll see you next time. Okay, so this is another ad. Um, this is the bottom of the oil tray, and I hope you can see that there are a few pieces of brass along the bottom after I drained this and what originally got my attention was the amount of uh, brass and aluminum that I saw on my last oil change using the Jiffy Lube procedure I'm really concerned about it there's there's quite a bit of copper it looks like right now still uh, it's definitely about probably probably 40 percent of uh, what it was before. So I know the Napa filter is definitely working, but scientifically I'm going to get it checked out. So kind of concerned me. That's why I was wanted to send it into a lab and see what they said. So that's the bottom of the oil tray.